Well, perfect timing because I'm about to make some cocktails. Let me just pick a glass. Come on this way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Take Your Time Gaming. I'm your host, Katie. Today is the Cat Quest bonus episode where I will give you a review of the game and then also make you a Mai Tai cocktail, which is my very favorite tiki cocktail and really my favorite cocktail in the whole dang world. So first things first, let's get the review out of the way. Man, I hope you enjoyed Cat Quest as much as I did. I thought it was a blast. Graphics wise, five out of five. I honestly don't know how I would improve them. I thought they were endearing, charming, really colorful. Clearly I like colors. Uh, they did a great job with enemy design, costume and weapon design. Uh, I enjoyed it all. Story-wise, this is probably where Cat Quest actually loses the most points. Granted, I did not see either one of the plot twists coming. However, I thought there could have been a lot more exposition and dialogue than there was. I enjoy story in my video games, and this one was pretty bare bones, especially when it came to side quests. With the side quests, you didn't even get a description of them when you were picking them up off the notice board. And I, I could have used more reasons as to why I'm doing all of these errands for all of these kitty cats. But, I mean, it was still enjoyable. It's not like I never not liked the story, so we're gonna go with three out of five for that. Gameplay. Gameplay is really where Cat Quest shines. I never got sick of the combat. I thought it was blast. I love that you increasingly discover new spells to use and all of them are fun in battle. You get to upgrade them. You have a good sense of accomplishment every time you gain a level. I mean, gameplay, I would give it five out of five. I, I just thought it was really fun. <laughs> and, and well balanced too. It was a well balanced game. Music. The music in Cat Quest was really charming. Uh, always bouncy, always fun. I liked the, the creepy dungeon music where you have all the, the bouncing heads and I liked the snow music. Uh, I, I thought it was all well done. My only change would have been more variety. Um, there were few tracks to the game. They were all great, but I wanted more. Let's have more music. So four out of five for music. Uh, lastly, after calculating the whole score, uh, Cat Quest gets a four out of five. You know, that's a very respectable score. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me play it. Two, and I'm, I will definitely play the sequel. I'm very much looking forward to Cat Quest 2. I want the cliffhangers to be resolved, and I want to meet the dogs from the Lupus Empire. Yeah, I think that wraps up my review of Cat Quest. Uh, why don't you comment and let me know what you guys thought? You know, give your own review. Uh, have you played it before? And then also what you thought of the watching it as a let's play, because I'd like to see both of those numbers from you. But okay, let's get into the meat of this episode, which is why you're really here. I'm looking at you, mom and dad. Uh, the Mai Tai. Okay, <laughs> as you can see, I have an array of ingredients, but I first wanna give y'all just a little background. I have talked about what tiki is and how you know it was moving in the 1940s and it, it, it's all about uh, exoticism and escapism and relaxation, but what is a tiki drink exactly? Obviously, it is a cocktail invented during the tiki movement, but there are qualifications that a drink has to make in order really to be tiki. So here they are, and I've got my notes here too that I, so I can refresh myself. Uh, usually, a tiki drink involves a myriad of different rums. So there are like over 500 different varietals of rum in the world, and every place they come from has a different way of distilling their rum, which creates a unique flavor profile. So a tiki drink typically has uh, at least two different types of rum in there in order to create a unique flavor profile. There are tiki drinks that use gin or bourbon or what have you, but the majority of the tiki drinks use multiple types of rum. So that's one of them. Fresh fruit juices. Tiki drinks are all about the fresh squeezed juices. Uh, also exotic juices. Um, you'll have your standard, you know, grapefruit, pineapple, lime juice, lemon juice, but then you'll get things like um, 
dragon fruit juice, uh, any any sort of exotic tropical fruit you can think of, we've probably made a juice out of it and, and put it with some rum because why the heck not? <laughs> Let's see, uh, homemade syrups. So if you are new to cocktails, uh, a syrup is simply an infusion of sugar, water, and possibly other flavors that you put on the stove, you don't boil it, you heat it up, you mix it together, and then you get a syrup which is your sweetener uh, that you'll add to a cocktail. So the most basic of all syrups is called a simple syrup, and it's a one-to-one sugar-to-water ratio. And you just use your cane sugar and your water, and you put it on the stove, you heat it up, and that's your syrup. And you'll use that in so many different types of sours, whiskey sour, margarita, what have you. Now, tiki syrups get a little bit more complicated, but they're still very easy to make if you can get your hands on the ingredients. So I highly recommend you always making your own syrups. But you can, I mean, there's hibiscus flower syrup, there's cinnamon syrup, there's vanilla syrup using vanilla bean pods, there's cardamom syrup. Um, what I have here is a Mai Tai rich simple syrup, and I'll go into how I made that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, syrups are, are very characteristic of tiki cocktails. Uh, and lastly, uh, what also makes a tiki cocktail it's not a tiki cocktail unless it's served in a super fun glass. As you can see, I have an impressive collection over there. And uh, this here is just a, a new present to me. It's brand new, it just came in the mail today. It's a Trader Vic's Blowfish mug. And fun garnishes as well. When I was trying to figure out how I wanted to make an internet presence, I thought about making a blog that focused on tiki drinks and calling it Inappropriate Garnishes. And I was gonna have garnishes instead of like giant gardenia and hibiscus flowers and mint and and fun orange peels, I was gonna have like a beanie baby or something just draped across from it. Because really you can go crazy. That's kind of the whole point of tiki is just um, excess. It's all about hedonism and just way too much, but it always ends up making a perfectly balanced cocktail. So that is how you define a tiki cocktail. So let's get into a little bit of the history of the Mai Tai. First of all, what does Mai Tai even mean? It is Tahitian for the best. And Trader Vic, the guy who opened the Trader Vic's restaurants that you might be familiar with and whose company made this mug, invented it in 1944 and actually ended up winning a lawsuit over it because the Mai Tai is the most famous of all tiki cocktails. and. Uh, Don the Beachcomber, also a famous tiki entrepreneur of the time, argued that he won it, or that he invented it, or actually I suppose he died and his wife did, but either way, there was a lawsuit, uh, and Trader Vic's won. And it's generally agreed upon uh, by tiki historians like Beach Mom Bear here, that it was indeed Trader Vic who invented it. But, uh, you know, it could be up in the wet air, you know, if you have any lost recipe books from the 1940s that say otherwise, I'd be really interested in looking at them. But uh, yeah, that's the the essence of the Mai Tai, uh, the history of it. It's boiled down to its roots. It's rum, lime juice, and, and orgeat, which is a almond-based syrup. And I buy my own orgeat because I'm lazy. You can make it at home, and there are plenty of recipes online for you to do so but I prefer to just purchase it. This is uh, Beach Bum Berries from Latitude 29, which is a tiki bar in New Orleans. And I use that. I also recommend the Small Hands Food Orchette if you're looking for a good one. So let's get into actually making the cocktail because <laughs> I'm parched. So people, I mentioned that fresh fruit juices are essential to a tiki drink. So whenever possible, always squeeze your own fruit juices. Uh, if you must buy from the store, you know, I always keep canned pineapple juice and a glass of grapefruit juice just in case. Uh, make sure they're unsweetened. Pro tip. <laughs> so let me read you, before I strain my lime juice, I'm going to read you the original Trader Vic Mai Tai recipe. And then I'm going to go into how I make my Mai Tai. Now, I didn't actually explain this before, but a great thing about tiki is experimentation. If you want to make your Mai Tai with different types of rums, go for it. You can do 
practically anything you want. As long as you've got the basics of rum, orgeat, and lime juice, I mean, you could probably call it a Mai Tai. And I, uh, oh God, this might be my, my ninth iteration of the Mai Tai. It took me literally three years to collect all the rums I wanted to use in my Mai Tai. And it's, it's the best Mai Tai I've ever had. And I've been to quite a few tiki restaurants. However, it's, I still want to keep trying different variations once I get my hands on some more different types of liquor. So keep that in mind. You don't have to make your Mai Tai any which way. You can have fun with it. And I will also, I mean, full disclaimer, the Mai Tai is the most expensive cocktail I make at home. However, you can do it on a budget and I will explain it, explain how. So, but let me read you Trader Vic's Mai Tai recipe. And I will throw this up on screen too. So this is the original. One ounce of fresh lime juice, pretty basic. Half ounce of orange curacao, which is this. And curacao is typically rum based, although it can be brandy based. And it has a, a, a drier, less sweet finish as opposed to something like, like Grand Marnier. Um, so that's why that's used in that. A quarter ounce of orgeat, the almond concoction. Quarter ounce of sugar syrup, and by sugar syrup, I assume they just mean typical one, one simple syrup, which I explained earlier. One ounce of dark Jamaican rum. So that's gonna be a dark rum from Jamaica. I mean, Myers is probably your most, when you think of a dark Jamaican rum, that's probably the most prolific, prolific of them. And one ounce amber Martinique rum. And a Martinique rum is something like this, although this one is not amber because they are aged and more expensive. This is just a, a white rum. But one thing about Martinique rums is that they are agricole rums. And that means that they are distilled purely from cane sugar rather than molasses. And it gives them a real funky flavor. <laughs> I, I, it's necessary, I think, the funkiness is in the Mai Tai. Uh, however, it can be a little overpowering. It's really similar in flavor. I mean, sometimes it's impossible to tell the difference, at least for me, uh, to cachaça, that Brazilian liqueur. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to talk about? Do, 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 do. All right, and that's your your recipe for the traditional Mai Tai. Thank you, Peach Bunberry. So let's get into how I make my Mai Tai. I use the ratios that are found in the Smuggler's Cove book, which Smuggler's Cove is a tiki bar in San Fran, which I have not gotten to go to yet, but their book is amazing. Really, really awesome. So for their recipe, I think it's on 261 in the box. Hello. That looks delicious, but <laughs> I, I make little scraps of recipe ideas and, and end up sticking them somewhere in the book after I've been imbibing and I never I only find them when I open it up again. <laughs> Uh, but so the Smuggler's Cove recipe is as follows. Three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice, and you'll notice that's down a uh, quarter of an ounce from the Beach Bone Berry recipe. A quarter of an ounce of the Mai Tai Rich Simple Syrup. Now what is that, you ask? Well, I will read it to you. You prepare it exactly the way you would a normal simple syrup. Um, now this makes 32 ounces, so I have halved that for this, so I'm going to read you the half amount because 32 ounces is just an obscene amount of syrup when you're only using a quarter ounce of it. Uh, so I use one cup of water for two cups of, I just closed it on me, good God, there we go, for two cups of Demerara sugar. Now Demerara sugar is cane sugar that's only partially refined and it has an almost like toffee molasses-y flavor and this one came from Florida. It's I bought it on Amazon, you can find it at Sprouts, whatever, it's it's not hard to get your hands on. But it has a, a more sophisticated flavor profile than just white sugar, I think. So, one cup of water, two cups of Demerara sugar, a quarter of a teaspoon vanilla extract, and then a pinch of table salt. And then you just Bring the water to a brief boil, you put everything together, you stir it up, make sure it's all fully dissolved, and then you let it cool, you stick it in the fridge, it'll keep for a few months, and there you go, you've got your rich simple syrup. 
And as I said, I'll make sure I, I put these recipes up for you guys. And then we have a quarter ounce of orgeat syrup, half an ounce of dry curacao, and then it says two ounces of blended aged rum. Now Smuggler's Cove is really big about giving you the freedom to choose whatever rums you want. So, based upon their, their ratios, I created this. So like Trader Vic wanted, uh, I chose an Agricola rum to be the base of my Mai Tai. Now, like I said, I didn't have the funds for the H1, but the white one, I think it works just fine. So you've got the funky base and it's gonna be a full ounce. And you know what? Before I even pour that in, I'm gonna strain my lime juice. Guys, when you're fresh squeezing your juice at home, always strain it, always. Otherwise it's too sour and it tastes funky. So, you just do as so. Get a strainer. If you don't have a strainer, buy one on Amazon for like $2. Cool. Fresh squeeze, strain lime juice. How easy was that? All right, so let's go ahead and do one ounce of lime juice as the Smuggler's Cove recipe calls for. You'll notice I'm using a graduated shot glass because I'm not fancy enough to afford the jigger I really want on uh, Cocktail Kingdom because it's rose gold plated. But you can use a shot glass the same way I'm doing. It just doesn't pour as nicely. One ounce of lime juice into your empty cocktail shaker. Now, as I said, the rum Clément, an ounce as the base. Oh, I wish I just cannot describe exactly what this smells like. It is a totally unique smell and everybody should try it at least once in their lives. Go back there with me. Okay. To partner with the funky rum, I like Appleton Estate Rare Blend 12 Year. Now, if this breaks your bank, buy, buy the Appleton Select. It's the cheapest one. I buy it by the handle because it is so great in cocktails. I mean, I we go through it pretty often, in my, pretty fast in my house. Uh, but this is it, uh, the Jamaican 12 Year Rum, uh, because as you remember, in the Beach Bumberry recipe, it calls for dark Jamaican rum. So rather than using Myers, which I find uh, too cloying, I use this, which is still very molasses-y. Has a strong, sweet, I mean, you could sip the, if you like really sweet things, this is a great sipping rum. It's honestly a little too sweet for me to sip plain. But it smells so good. It has vanilla and molasses notes. So we're gonna couple another ounce of this. Back in your box you go. And now you'll notice, you remember the Smuggler's Co. called for three ounces, right? No, I'm sorry, two ounces. So we have one ounce left of rum that we can add in there. So I added this El Dorado 12 year, just a half ounce of it, because this is a Demerara rum. So rather than uh, being made with cane sugar, like the Demerara sugar, it has the toffee, it's made with Demerara and has the toffee and sort of molasses -y notes, and I think it goes really well with the syrup. And if this breaks your bank, get the El Dorado Five Year. It's cheap and good. Like I said, it took me three years to accumulate all the, the rums I wanted, so you can definitely make tiki cocktails on a budget. Here, this is from Guyana, by the way. Oops, I didn't pour this one in there. So just a half ounce of this. And then lastly, I added a half ounce of my favorite rum. Smith & Cross, which is a Jamaican pot-stilled rum. 
and it's funky and it's strong, but it's not funky in the same way that an ag agricole rum, like a cachaca, is funky. It's it's just strong. It's kind of in your face. Like I'm also a wine drinker and I enjoy tannins a lot. I like a wine I say that punches me in the face. And this is kind of a rum that hits you in the face. <sighs> so good. Okay, so I top my Mai Tai off with just a half ounce of this guy. I add Smith & Cross to pretty much any cocktail that calls for rum. <laughs> Even if it doesn't say use some Jamaican rum, I, I try to add it to everything. <laughs> I just think it adds depth to it. Alright, so we have a half ounce of our dry curacao. Quarter ounce of our orchat. And then we will finish it with just a quarter ounce of our Mai Tai Rich symbol. has never ever called for bitters. However, I have these tiki bitters, which include flavors of cinnamon, allspice, and island spices. And I think just a half dropper full, four drops, just adds a nice little something to the cocktail. See, I'm not following the recipe and it's totally okay. It's tiki, you do what you want. It's all about your own satisfaction, how much you like things drops, which is half a dash, FYI. So if something ever falls for a dash of bitters, you know, like you take your Angostura bottle and boom, that's a dash, uh, that equates to eight drops and a half a dash is four drops if you're using a dropper one. So, fun fact. So now we get to shake. First things, I'm going to fill this with crushed ice because a Mai Tai is typically served Actually, it's typically served in a glass like this so that you can see the spent lime wedge that will be inside of it. However, like I said, I just got this and I'm gonna use my fun glass. So I'm going to ice this up and then I will shake the cocktail. So now I'm going to crush ice in the blender. actually shake the cocktail. Now, one common issue I notice with home bartenders is that they do not ice their cocktail shakers heavily enough. The ice in your cocktail shaker is not simply to cool your cocktail, it is also to dilute your cocktail. And without the dilution of the correct amount of ice, your cocktail will be unbalanced. So, I mean, there are stirred cocktails like Negroni's and Old Fashions, etc. But those recipes are created with the idea that you're stirring them, not shaking them with ice. This is a shaking cocktail, so I want you to look how much liquid is in this. And then I'm going to show you how much ice I'm going to add. Do not be afraid to over ice your cocktail shaker. Also, most people don't shake it long enough. Now this is how much ice I put in my shaker. And I should have a perfectly chilled, chilled, 
chill, chill cocktail in 10 seconds, but I like to stir it in it. glass when it hurts your hands you've shaken enough now this shaker I'm using has a built-in strainer so I don't need to use another one but yours may not you might want to use a Hawthorne strainer Because this is the most expensive cocktail I make, I'm not wasting a single drop. I'm going to pack it with a little bit more crushed ice. Luckily, if you make a mess, this is just ice, so you're fine. <laughs> and now, final touch. We garnish with mint. And you wanna just distress the mint a little bit. Ah, I'm distressed. Release all the good smells because every time you take a sip, you want to inhale the mint along with it. And, ladies and gentlemen, you have a Mai Tai. Let's try it. That is so, so good. Oh God, I haven't made me one of these in months. Oh, I've been trying to be good, but why be good when you can have a Mai Tai? Guys, thank you so much for watching my bonus episode. I hope you enjoyed the Cat Quest review and learning a little bit about tiki, rum, and the Mai Tai. Please like and subscribe. It is very appreciated. I, if you want me to keep making delicious cocktail videos, I'm gonna need some likes and subscribes. Uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, TYT Gaming, capital K, capital C. And I think that's it for my first cocktail episode. Uh, cheers, guys. <laughs>